Good morning, dear friends, and greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We did not have this meditation time for the last two weeks. I was on a, on a, on a tour to visit some places. And, uh, but again, I am happy to uh, be with you this morning as we meditate on God's word. Today, we will not be having any translation into Hindi because my translator is not physically well. And therefore, I nevertheless thought I would send this meditation only in English. I would like us to consider the discipleship. The mission of the church as Jesus gave to the church is to make disciples, not just to make Christians or believers. According to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, we read these words. Jesus said, go into all the world, because all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. I want you to take note of this expression. Not Christians, not believers. Now, one has to be a Christian and one has to be a believer. That is essential. But we are not to stop there. Everyone who acknowledges Christ as Lord and Savior must ultimately become a disciple and not remain in that level of being a Christian or a believer. And today, the greatest problem the church face, faces is this. Churches are filled with believers and Christians, but no disciples. This is the failure of the church. And therefore, I would like you to consider the difference between a believer and a disciple. Which is very, very important, a difference between a believer and a disciple. And it is very important for us to understand this difference. And then after this meditation, you think carefully and consider your own life. Examine your own life and see where you are. Are you still standing in that place where you became a believer? Or have you made any effort to continue to grow until you become a disciple. And it will help you to check on this once you understand the difference between a believer and a disciple. Who is a disciple? A disciple is someone whose commitment to God and his cause is deeper than it is in a believer. I repeat it again. A disciple is someone whose commitment to Jesus Christ and his cause is deeper than it is in a believer. And in order to understand this, you just consider the prayers of a believer or consider your own prayer. What do you pray for? You know, a believer's prayer is this. Lord, what can you do for me? Bless me, Lord. And that is the prayer of a believer. Whereas, what is the prayer of a disciple? Now, if you read the book of Acts chapter 9, where we read about the conversion of Apostle Paul. 
You remember that story and that scene. He was on his way to Damascus to persecute and arrest Christians and disciples of Jesus Christ and uh, bring them to Jerusalem, put them in, 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 in prison or kill them. With that intent, he was on his way to Damascus. But as he was nearing Damascus, he had this revelation from heaven. Who appeared to him? The risen Lord Jesus Christ himself. And to the question that uh, Saul of Tarsus asked, Who are you, Lord? Jesus said, I am Jesus of Nazareth, the one whom you are persecuting. And at that moment, Saul committed his life Everything he was and everything he had, he surrendered them all to Jesus and he immediately became uh, not only a Christian and not only a believer, he became a disciple of Jesus Christ. Look at the, his prayer. While Jesus spoke to him, and he saw this brilliant light of the glory of the risen Lord. He became blind. And when he physically became blind, his inner eyes were opened to see who Jesus Christ truly is. And I, what I want you to notice there, if you read that passage in Acts chapter 9, this is the way Paul began his Christian life and Christian ministry. And once he understood who, was, who has appeared to him from heaven, he not only a total surrender, in that total surrender, he surrendered everything he was and everything he had to the Lordship of Jesus. And then he had a very short prayer, one sentence prayer. What was that prayer? Lord, what do you want me to do? And so this is one difference. A disciple's prayer is, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? A believer's prayer is, Lord, what can you do for me? Do it, Lord, and bless me. That is the prayer of a believer. A disciple, on the other hand, will pray, Lord, the only reason I now will live the rest of my life is you, and the only thing I want to do in my life is to serve you. And I want you to let me know, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? In other words, he was telling the Lord, I don't need anything more. I have my life, and this life is from now on is not mine. It's going to be yours. As such, tell me, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? That's the difference. And in the light of this, I give this question to you, leave this question with you. What are you in relation to Jesus? You call Jesus Lord, Lord. You say to Jesus, Lord, I am yours. And thank you for saving me. And pulling me out of eternal hell and giving me heaven. For all these things, you are grateful to God. But in your life and with your life, what are you going to accomplish for the kingdom of God? And for that, only Jesus can answer you. What he requires of you to do in order to extend his kingdom and spread his kingdom principles among the people and make disciples, not just believers. So what are you, just a believer or a disciple? 
leave i leave this question to you for you to ponder seriously and answer to the lord what am i truly am i am i just a believer and remaining there and the one thing is it does not cost you anything to remain as a believer or to be a christian it does not cost you anything others don't even have to know you are a christian or a believer you can spend the rest of your life remaining as a christian or a believer and to do nothing for the kingdom of god and for jesus christ who gave his life for you will you consider seriously and to become a disciple who tells you what you must do it is for his glory your life must be it is his ministry that you must engage in not what more christ can do what more christ can do he gave his life for you is there anything greater than that he has done that he has given you his life for your life is is it not enough my brothers and my sisters that is more than enough you will never be able to pay back the debt that you owe to jesus but the only thing you and i can do is do our best to build up the kingdom of god bringing souls into his kingdom and prepare them for the rapture prepare them for eternity for this may the holy spirit use you and god bless you as you ponder on this and give yourselves to the work of god amen